Hello, beautiful party people. Old Man Vin here with a little bit of an update before the show. So yeah, something went wrong, didn't it? Not terribly, though. Considering the fire that could have happened, it was reasonably smooth. Jordan's back in Helsinki, Finland. In a new place on LTE. He has a couple of cracks, snapples, and pops. For a hot second towards the end of the steam segment, it clears up. And, you know, maybe a bit or two during the news. I've processed against it, tried to clean it up best as possible. It's nothing major, just wanted to prepare you for that. But most importantly, if you are a patron, just a reminder that we have flipped the switch on that stupid monkey bot that helps us keep track of roles. So, there is a post currently on the page, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, explaining how you can take 10 seconds and make sure that's activated so everything is copacetic. All right. That's really it. Like I said, could have been worse. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Drawful 2 has shown signs of life. I, for one, cautious, cautious, new word, cautiously optimistic, and Valve has released some actual statistics. Turns out, all you had to do was ask, man. One million VR headset shit. And hardly anyone gives a shit. And hey, 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 hey. Do, 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 do you want to fuck that sword? Because I kind of do. PC gaming is dead, albeit less so than over the past, I don't know, 20 years. And do you have a GTX 970? The current Linux uh, drivers would like a word with your three and a half gigs. Mm-hmm. How's it going, everyone? I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual. Broadcasting and switching the bits. We're doing all this fun nightmare fuel. All under Linux joined every week by our man from Finland. He's in Helsinki because he's awesome like that. We don't know why he goes there. He just likes to... Because uh, I like to get hell stinky. Hell stinky. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and formerly from Space Portugal, but now in Britannia. That is Pedro Mateus being Hello. awesome. Doing his things, and together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last, most special bit known. It's Cocaine Voltron. That's going to get us demonetized. Um, Lads, <laughs> before we get into it, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Um, I thought I was going to have a really good story for everyone, but I'm not. I'm not. A little sad. A little bit sad. Yeah. You, you, told, you, you, te- you tease us in the show notes with this shit. Yeah, man, I know, man. I, I know. I, I just wanted to give you a taste because, oh, and Frank's here too. Frank's, uh, you know, doing his thing, right. showing it off. Um, I, I needed to get some propylene glycol. I found some propylene glycol at the tractor supply store. This is the real tractor supply store. This is not for your urban gardener. <laughs> These are the type of people that ranch things. I don't know. They put American flavor all over it. And completely non-eventful. I did spend 30 minutes there because they had an entire aisle dedicated to horse shit. Not actual horse shit, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Well, I, I mean, if it's a, ta- if it's a tractor manure. store, like, yeah, they have an aisle full of horse manure. That makes that tracks. That makes logical sense. Yeah, it was a thing. Nothing to report. Um... That, that's about it. What about you, man? Do you have a pretty smooth flight from Canadian land to, uh... Um, well, one thing I noticed as I was getting on the plane was I remembered to pack my little antlion mod mic <laughs> thing, thanks again to the antlion folks for sending that, but I forgot to grab the right pair of headphones. So, thanks to the magic of ghetto engineering and tape, you can hear me. <laughs> That'll do it. Uh... Over here, not really much to report. Uh, work's been keeping me busy. Uh, although the game we're throwing chairs at this week managed to keep me busier. Because I started it up on Thursday the first time. And I thought, okay, let's leave it there. Something is weird. Something weird is going on. But uh, you'll see more of that coming. Don't you worry. Uh, 
And then, yeah, no, it just outright wouldn't work. It wouldn't load my save. So, yeah, I was uh, I was getting a bit worried come Friday. <laughs> One thing we never oh, have to worry about every week because it always sees it coming. I think it likes it, Jordan. It's the horse, yeah, and the ho- the horse uh, the horse is feeling a little nipply and needs to get massaged. Oh. Oh, it's the steam Linux. Update of the, of the week. week. <laughs> yeah, so we got a new uh, we got a new Steam update. Um, as I find my cursor, which is located suspiciously. Oh, sweetheart! I was just playing that game, the home game myself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is the November thirtieth client update. Uh, there is now a uh, per game Steam input out opt out box for force on and force off. And uh, there is now a launcher mode. So you might remember certain games have the Unity Scream of Nope or mm-hmm. their regional equivalent. Mm-hmm. And so now when you're in big picture mode, um, the Steam controller will now just switch to keyboard and mouse mode so that you can fuck through the uh, launcher, which it already kind of did. Um, I never ran into that problem, but then again, I don't spend that much time in the big picture mode. Uh, but it's fixed. It's available for your download and consumption. So go have fun. And if you're a Windows user, they have some they have some shit ready for you. I don't I don't give a shit about it. So like with the launcher mode, I explain exactly what it does, man. So so basically, what happens is when you launch the game, it'll like load the Steam controller profile. Mm-hmm. Um, and that means that if it's not set to like use specific keyboard and mouse functionality, you won't be able to interact with the launcher. Okay. So th- this is just a workaround where it says, oh, there's a launcher here. Well, now we're just going to switch to keyboard and mouse mode so you can actually navigate the launcher and start the game. Pretty groovy. It sort of already worked, uh, but like you said, it's only sort of. Because I remember with the Unity Scream of Nope specifically on Steam OS proper when I had the Steam Box up and running doing, you know, Steam Boxy things, um, it did sort of detect when the Unity launcher specifically came up and it would switch into desktop mode and it would actually let you use a uh, mouse and keyboard. Uh, I'm guessing what they did was they changed it specifically so it wouldn't be changing from game mode to desktop mode when the launcher came up and then back to game mode. So it should avoid any other issues that rise up from all that profile switching happening, I'm guessing. Hmm. Maybe you never know. Quite possibly, but we don't need to worry about it because yeah. um, Steam Gaming yeah, just, completely dead. Yeah, just take your computer. Dead. Throw it no, out. absolutely. Throw no out. one's playing games on the. P- oh no! Wait, seventeen million concurrent users on Steam this Saturday. Oh well. Alrighty then. Uh, so this news comes from PC Games N, and well, uh, la- they last Saturday, were paying real. attention. Yes. Uh, last Saturday, uh, right around the time that we were doing the show, probably. Uh, and so, uh, uh, let, let they read this us, article. PC this... Gaming, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they read this article saying that eh, slightly over, well, they actually came closer to 18 million uh, players at the time. It was 17 million uh, 600 and... uh, 83,000. Uh, it's a teeny tiny font there. Um, and yeah, it uh, per- uh, it appears that uh, Steam is still doing okay, despite all the shit and all the news we've been getting of uh, indie developers not wanting to go on Steam to, you know, put their games out there and have people play them because Steam nowadays is just like a big old sewer game I just think, spewing man, out shit. Is uh, one thing to note is a single game amounted for forty three point one five percent of all active players. Yeah, yeah, PUBG. it's uh, PUBG. <laughs> it's PUBG. Yeah, you know it's PUBG. PUBG nowadays it's just all over the place, and you know that. And as we reported a couple of weeks ago. China is now a thing on Steam because uh, someone punched a big old Steam-shaped hole in the Great Firewall of China, and, well, and yeah. Be, and be, because China is going to be a recurring theme in the Steam segments for the next... For <laughs> yes. Year. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, the, go, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was just going to say, like, 
yeah, the, the 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 whole PC gaming is dead thing was all the marketing ploy. Anyways, I I, I feel it was just a bunch of bud output by Sony and Microsoft. I don't know, man. You can shut up. My, my new Xbox does like six four Ks, and uh, some games kind of <laughs> run at thirty ish. The, 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 that's sweet. Thank you. <laughs> All right. uh, but but yeah, no, I mean, everyone basically everyone has a computer these days, and people want to play games on them. And I mean, you can say say what you will about Steam Direct and the flood, but flood of just crap. But odds are, there's going to be some genre of game that you can play on PC that you're going to engage with and enjoy. And it's probably one lower barrier for entry. Despite what PC Master Race would have you believe, PC gaming is probably one of the lowest barrier of entry things, period. Well, do you know one of the things that kind of uh, hurts PC gaming? Uh, virtual reality? Uh, I, I was actually going to say douchey <laughs> motherfuckers with man buns, but you... <laughs> he, uh, that, that guy needs to get on a bike and start riding it with the headset on. That's all I'm saying. No, this is... Uh, so apparently one million uh, VR headsets have been shipped. Now... Let's let's qual let's qualify this because this is some wonderful clickbaity headline from venturebeat.com. Links to all this stuff in our show notes, of course. One million headsets total. So this means PSVR, Vive, Oculus, Gear VR, all that nonsense in total have shipped one million units. It looks like Oculus is kind of taking the lead here because they like drastically cut their uh, cost or slash their price. I remember a couple months ago you could get like a nine or a ten seventy and an Oculus Rift in like a bundle for like under a thousand bucks, mm -hmm. and that was sort of the uh, impetuous for a lot of people, at least at my work, when they were saying, "Oh, I'm, I'm buying an Oculus because it's cheap." Uh, picking that up, it ma it makes sense, uh, especially for Windows gamers because you know they have the option here in Linux land. We have OS VR, which doesn't really have much in the way of support, and the Vive. Right, we got the it's HTC Vive, but I mean, for Windows users, mm -hmm. or we, we used to have Oculus support. Pepperidge King Farm remembers, um, mm -hmm. but it does make sense in a way to buy the cheaper option. I think Sony really got into it because they made this shit wicked cheap, and it's. Not mm -hmm. what I would call an acceptable experience, but I mean, it gets the job done. I've looked at it. I've tinkered with it. But with the Oculus, you kind of, I, I think people are looking at this going, all right, I, I'm going to drop three, 400 wet stinky on something that I'm going to play with for maybe a week. Then novelty is going to wear off and it's going to sit in the corner like my racing wheel does. Uh, and... And now I'm going to cross my fingers and hope more games come out, and they probably won't. Um, Pedro? Yeah, no, I'm totally... I'm in camp. VR is a gimmick. Absolutely a gimmick, and maybe it will be the future, but it's not the present. And yeah, uh, a million... <laughs> what, 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 Pedro? The present sold. isn't the future? This, this, thank you for this lesson in temporal yes. mechanics. I was, I was really confused. Yeah, uh, be yeah. pedantic all you like. But fact of the matter is, there are a lot of people putting out a lot of money for what is a glorified toaster that fucks your head constantly while you're trying to play a game. Uh, it's, I don't know, I don't see it. Maybe I will. Maybe it will blow me away when it finally becomes uh, the thing. But it's not the thing right now. And I don't know what it will take to for it to become the thing. I know that Linux support has only recently become a thing with the um, the Vive and the PSVR. Most it's actually that's one of the things that uh, really gets to me. It's Razer. Razer are the big pushers of PSV, uh, not PSVR, OSVR, and um, it's Razer. They haven't really supported Linux in any way, shape, or fashion in the past. Uh, they haven't been opposed to it, but they don't really see the point in supporting Linux. So, so why are they I, pushing I, 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 OS I, I, VR I don't know. so I'm, much? I'm, I'm, because I'm, I've, I've played a bunch of VR games now because I, I have friends who have access to the hardware, and there are definitely a bunch of compelling experiences. But I feel, I feel, I feel number one, they're they're targeting VR at gamers when really they shouldn't be. They should be targeting targeting it at other verticals like uh, training and medical and whatnot. Um, but yes. at the same time, you also have to acknowledge the fact that there, w regardless, this is this is a new platform. There will be growing pains. That is that is you cannot sidestep this, and you know 
people say, oh, VR is a gimmick, VR is a gimmick. Well, yeah, because people are still ju- are just now trying to figure out what they can, in fact, do with the platform. Oh, no, I yeah. completely agree with them. Everyone's looking at it like, what do we do with it? How do we do this? And are we going to do a VR theme park? China, again, they're doing a lot of mm-hmm. those. And you're seeing escape rooms built around that. But mm-hmm. we're two generations out. Pedro said, what would it take? I'll tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take sunglasses like that. It's going to take no wires and it's going to have optional augmented reality. It's going to be something you can wear all day. And, um, anything and it, it won't malfunction and slap you with the turn. Yes. And, and it's really going to help with yeah. population control because it's going to thin the herd out. <laughs> yeah. Se- sexy yeah, VR, VR, VR porn is totally a thing. Um, that should actually be more of a thing. Uh, I was thinking, um, <laughs> traffic, but, uh, Hey, whatever works. <laughs> well, no, 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 I mean, you you have your VR headset on, watching porn while you're driving your car. <laughs> all, all, all the above. It's going to be brilliant. Um, we're going to talk about some hardware, but not why or for whatever reason you might think. Actual market share of Ryzen. Where does this come? Um, what subreddit? AMD used to be our delusional. Uh, um, AMD. Yep. American locomotive locomotives. He's like, hey man, I'm curious about the hardware survey because I think it's bullshit. Because it is. He sent Valve an email, and Valve's all like, yo man, let's give you some actual numbers. And they kind of break down from AMD Damn. other to Phenom A10, A8, up, up, up to i3, i7, i5. But the one we're kind of curious about is this one here is the AMD Ryzen. So starting from March. Nothing, 0.19, 0.31, all the way up to 0.94 in September, which, mm-hmm. lads, I think that is kind of cool because it's not even Doctor Who Day and it's December. And that's really the only thing that happens during the month of December is the Doctor Who special. AMD rolled out with the Ryzen's. They've been very successful. I thought, not the i5s, but the R5s. Good, good on you, AMD. Um, you make me think yeah. i5s. Wicked cheap, good performers, i7s, and then Threadrippers if you just want to scream YOLO every time you um, boot up. And those are awesome. Multi-core cheap, and most importantly, very performant. And AMD and Linux mm-hmm. go together, especially on the CPU side. We always seem to like the underdogs. And it also had the added benefit of lighting a fire under Intel's ass organ. Even their new chip, their new 8-core, whatever the hell it's coming, it's probably going to be halfway reasonably priced. And I've seen things like the uh, lads at Star Citizen were talking about, yeah, we're going to start doing some serious testing on Threadripper for the client. Because yeah, that, I mean, for Star Citizen, that makes actual perfect sense because the game's already 100 gigs. It's going to be intense. Um, and yeah, you got, you got to remember that, again, this this is a CPU that just recently came out. And it's not like people were chomping at the bit to upgrade their systems to the brand new hotness, right? People mm-hmm. typically, I, I would say, refresh their desktops on a period of like four to seven years. So, I, I, and I, like hell, our, our holdouts were basically just holding up for Ryzen because they didn't want to go Team Blue. I caved and decided to install Minix on my computer. So uh, there, that that's definitely a thing. Team Red, you fucking uh, traitor! Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. Um, also, 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 you know, China is still firmly in the Intel camp, especially for the lower end PCs, mm-hmm. because China hashtag because China. Oh yeah. So I, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna see this go up over time. You you, you also got to remember that Intel has about a decade of market penetration that AMD does not have, and that's not going to change overnight. It's definitely going to be yeah. That was the big thing with the FX CPUs, which was the you know people bought into the FX uh, bulldozers when it they first came out, and uh, as years went by, AMD didn't really do much with it, and the performance uh, because game developers mostly. Uh, started to focus on that single threaded performance instead of the multi-core. So, yeah, Intel took the lead on that one. And, well, Ryzen, on the other hand, had a 40% IPC improvement in single-threaded tasks over FX. And that shows because you can actually see a very nice linear progression in that graph that uh, American uh, Locomotive... Uh, put on Reddit, and okay, it ends in September. That's when the uh, the stats end, and in September, 
I'm guilty of still being one of the people with the FX CPUs. But uh, yeah, no, it's good to see. It's very good to see I, AMD I think it's slowly coming very, out of that. Yeah, it's very good to see. And a lot of people tend to build new computers on Doctor Who Day. So or they're mm-hmm. around. Yep. I mean, it is the reason for the season. Yep. So, um, Mega Blast, man. Let's talk about some new games they're, they're, or some game uh, yeah, updates. <laughs> new games, right? <laughs> Mega Glass, that's that open source RTS that's been around forever. Uh, they had it priced. I don't remember what the original price was, but they've dropped it down to a buck because uh, the main reason for not making it free to play on Steam was because they wanted to host dedicated servers and, you know, fund their development. And now that they got the money that they needed, they said, you know what? You can you can still get the game. You can still go to like Source Forge or whatever if you feel like sitting through a bunch of ads or GitHub. Build it yourself, or you can get it on Steam with everything put together. Uh, and now it's only ninety nine cents. And honestly, considering like the the uh, the absolute shit pile of dollar games, mm-hmm. this is actually a decent one. So go toss mm-hmm. them a buck. Why no, not? and I, I definitely get to see yeah. good game. I mean, good guy. Megaglass developers because they did prices like ah I don't know the convenience alone of having it if you like Megaglass or just supporting them but the fact that they got the coin together and they're like yeah we're, we're cool we we'd make it cheaper but apparently ninety nine cents is as low as you can go unless you just switch it to free to play mm. so yeah and, t- toss these guys a buck Why yeah not? they've been around forever it's definitely a thing oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't have PUBG, but uh, we got something that runs even worse. And... Oh yeah, we do. Uh, uh, if you think you've played the worst uh, performing Unity game ever on Linux, you probably have have played Rust. And if you haven't played Rust, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. But hey, they have a new game, a uh, new update out. Uh, it's uh. They released it with the dev blog 188, and they have some changes. Uh, they've um, added some sounds to igniting and extinguishing campfires and furnaces. Uh, they put some outlines around objects to help them stick out from the rest of the world. That's probably a good idea. Uh, they have a new stone quarry monument. They have some recoil fixes for weapons. Check this business and out. They changed some maps around. I under I understand why yes. it runs so poorly now. It is it has been optimized for running with sixteen megabytes of RAM. That that's 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 it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, the the thing that stuck out to me is uh, apparently they fixed some weird satchel behavior, which is a polite way of saying they had some ball sack issues. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. You gotta. I think we can say this very safely that uh, even though we don't, is uh, PUBG Unreal Engine four, isn't it? Yep. Yep. That's so. Oh, uh, but and but before I forget, the worst performing Unity game out there is Shrooms. By the way, ooh, yeah, not Rust. Well, I don't know. You man. clearly have never played Legends of Aetherius. <laughs> I don't I, know. I, I have. Shrooms I get curious because Rust has been getting a lot of updates. A lot of sandbox survival type games after PUBG has just blown the hell up. Mm-hmm. Have mm-hmm. like came back into development. Rust being one of them because it was not being developed very heavy until recently, and it's still in alpha after like two years of early access. But point being, point being with that. On the Ryzen 7 with a 980, with just default settings, it's a chuggy 30 frames a second at 1080p. I was just like, how the hell do you pull that off in almost, it's almost 2018. How? Even with an Intel processor. There are some people out there actively playing this game on Linux with an Intel processor, and it runs like ass. Mm. If you want to get 60 frames, you'll be lucky. Lucky if you can get it at like low or ultra low or whatever the Unity engine default is for ultra low. Uh, it's it's just it's, it's just bad. ASCII mode. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, <laughs> just game console. It's just like, ooh, look, sixty. Uh, yeah, hey. just, yeah, it's it's a mud prompt to go north. That, that's it, man. That's it. Hashtag grows bitches. Uh, a game we have genuinely been talking about on this show for years. For a long time. Years. <laughs> Distance, a good... Well, watch that headset, buddy. Um, yep. Distance, fun racing game. Your cars got wings. You got 
like Brock, it's, it's it's fun. We like it. They got an update. This one's called the Skybox Update. Build 5821, they've added some things. They've optimized CPU performance, memory usage throughout the game, even though we've held this game up as a shining example of, holy shit, look how good a Unity game can run if you know what the hell you're doing. They pulled that off in space. They made it better. <laughs> they've added, uh, well, they've improved. Car explosions, visual effect, that's supposed to be nice. You haven't got a chance to check this out. But uh, a gang of bug fixes... All this fun stuff. It's definitely there. But the name of this update, Pedro, it's the Skybox update. Mm -hmm. And I, I, yes. I, 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 did, I did the fucking record scratch. I just knocked it off the record. It's like, wait, whoa, whoa, what? Y'all motherfuckers are reworking the, yeah, sky, no. the, the, the Skybox? And listen, if, you do, if you're reworking the Skybox... Probably time to release it because that's busy work for interns. That's, yeah, man. Absolutely. I was reading through the uh, the patch notes and I'm like, this reads a lot like a post-launch patch. So first thing I did, went to Steam. Oh, look, there's an update. Downloaded the update. Uh, the car explosion is different, is it? I don't really see it, but okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, the skybox. I'm not paying attention to the skybox. I'm paying attention to the track. Now, I did notice that they released a couple of new tracks to the... If you're just playing, uh, instead of playing the story mode, quote-unquote, uh, you're playing the arcade mode, and if you go into sprint, they now have a couple of the story mode levels that previously were not available in arcade mode. So, I was playing through some of those levels, and... It, it's a new thing. Uh, release the game. What are you waiting for? Come on. They're 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 clearly working on that Vulcan render, right? I have, man. I don't <laughs> know, but I I have been keeping track of their discussion forums, and the natives are starting to turn on them. With the mm -hmm. when's this coming out again? Why isn't this game released? And Basically, I'm sorry, you guys have been using the same excuse for almost two years of it because we've still got money to work on it, is what you should be saying, because that'd be the truth, which mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with. But No, they are still writing their uh, early access shield of, well, you don't really get to say bad things about us because it's still in development. Oh, no, it's a fun game. I enjoy playing it. I'd like to see it released because I'd like to throw chairs at it. Now, now yeah. we're going to talk about some new games and Jordan's Raging Clue. Listen, my, my, my sword is unsheathed and lubricated and ready to go. Now, this is Boyfriend Dungeon. I, 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 saw, I saw a trailer for this a while ago, and they, uh, they recently announced um, that there will be a Linux version. But essentially what it is is mm -hmm. a procedurally generated dungeon crawler where you can find weapons, and if you want to upgrade them, you have to romance them. Because you can date your sword, uh, and that that that's that's basically it. Um, you, uh, you 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 find you find appar apparently there's like a cat that you can romance as well, which is strange. I'm not into that. You might be just you know get consent. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, some something tells me that uh, fighter from Eight Bit Theater. If you y'all get that dated 2000s web comic reference, uh, is going to be super into this game. But you know it actually. But con considering if it's a solid enough dungeon crawler. This might actually be what it what it takes to get me into a dating sim. Is just you know, hey, I now now I have a reason to try and romance this foil or EP or dagger or whatever because I can I can min max it. Uh, so Jordan, I got a question uh, because I'm totally with you on the whole, you know, writing the dungeon crawling to know whether or not this. Um, this game will be any good but and i'm totally also totally down for the fact that you get to date your weapons if you want to upgrade them that said though uh the release date is currently 2019 yeah that 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 is a bit strange considering that 2018 is coming around the corner um mm -hmm. I, I i i feel that might be a typo Otherwise, um, a year Could of development be. is probably 
Because I, I was under the impression, because I, I remember reading stuff about this game like months ago, and I was under the impression that it was either going to be going into early access or it was just straight up done. So I don't know. 2019 seems a bit odd. Get back to us, guys. Send us some hate mail yeah. or you know some love mail. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm looking at you, Halberd. <laughs> You you got some hissy poppy crackly in your headset, Jordan. You might want to take I? a look at that as we move on to the next bit of business. Oh yeah. So we have some Black Mirror? No, I thought it was the Minions. Oh well. Yeah, the uh, Dominions the Five is a um It's a game. Uh, how do I put this? So yes, uh if you liked I don't know. Um, let's see, Civilization Four X type of deal. If yeah, if you like Four X games, you probably know about Dominions, and because Dominions is that game that the graphical fidelity isn't exactly there. But if you've ever felt like other Four X, you're right, Pedro. Really the graphical fidelity is not core. there, but goddamn the price, forty bucks. Oh, yes. The price is there. Absolutely. Uh, so if you've ever felt like other 4Xs weren't really scratching your hardcore strategy itch, you probably haven't played the Dominion series because if you want thousands of different units, each with their own stats, uh, hundreds of resources, tens of management quote-unquote mini games with different impacts on how the game actually plays out, this is it. That is where Dominions shines. Dominions is that game, is that 4X game that, admittedly, I played a lot more of Dominions 4 on the Sura back in the day. That should tell you how long ago that was. Uh, <laughs> I played a lot more of it than I probably should have. It was the one 4X game that I actually enjoyed because it was so in-depth. And yeah, there's a lot of text to read, absolutely. But... It, if you like turn-based strategy in any way, shape, or form, this is probably the game you're looking for. Because Dominions 4 was already a massive monster when it comes to mechanical complexity. 5 just cranks that up even higher. It Again, it doesn't have civilization-level graphics, so if you go into that expecting at least reasonably-ish 2.5D so sprites... We're, we're gonna have a bad so time. So, in, in addition to only requiring OpenGL 1.4, which is wow, they're still making games in OpenGL 1.4. This is basically the epitome of ivory tower game design, right? Where unless you're already invested or mm -hmm. you're willing to commit hundreds of hours to this, you will suck at this game. Well, what I have to ask both, both of you because it's turn based and fuck that noise. Um, can, can you play over email? Uh, I that, uh, that I actually don't, don't know. know you, you still can do that with uh, like, the latest does have games. Multiplayer. Okay. <laughs> I don't um, know, man. I think for like retro purposes, you should be able to print out an envelope, and it should have that built into it. So yeah, yeah, just, just, no, just play by play by snail mail. <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> or oh no 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 no. You, you pre-ordered the game, and one of the pre-order bonuses is an actual carrier pigeon, so you can like play by Raven. <laughs> Except they forget to poke holes mm -hmm. in the box. Yeah, so you just get fucking dead pigeon. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, for for forty bucks, that's a little steep. Mm. I'm, I'm reading this as thirty three euros, but you know that's because I'm in crazy. Hey, man, it's form. definitely a thing though because it's that t it's that game, and you know what the game we're talking about is. That's somebody's jam, and that thing could be twenty dollars yep. more. They're still gonna fucking buy it. It's. It's Ab that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you can tell by the reviews because right now it's sitting at 142 reviews with 95% of them being positive. Mm -hmm. So apparently people don't really care about the graphics. Right. It's all about the mechanics. Yeah. Go figure. It, it, it's all it's all people who are already invested, hence Ivory Tower. But you know what? I, I think it's time to get piggy with it. It's your story, man. It, it is. That's right. Um... <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, guys. It's it's six o'clock in the morning. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, this is this is Black Mirror. No, it doesn't have anything to do with the Netflix series. This is a horror adventure game from THQ Nordic. And um, it is um, available right now, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, it was it mm -hmm. was released this it was released in this past week. You can pick it up for around 30 euro. Uh, it's on sale now. I don't know what that is in Canadian. It's probably like 35 bucks, but it is um, sort of a horror uh, adventure game. 
Uh, now, riddle, riddle me this, because I didn't have time to research this fully, but this looks like a Unreal Engine 4 game, no? Nah, not to me. I mean, it kind of looks uh, no. Unity. Could be. Could this be, is actually could be like a, new uh, a remastered edition of. Oh wait, old, wait, wait, wait! Hang on. Game. This it takes place in Scotland. Uh, games that took place in Scotland aren't allowed to be made in Unreal Engine Four. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the, 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 that's actually that's actually in there like yeah it's, in, it's in the mice type at the bottom it's like what the hell is that doing yeah. in here yeah but i mean it, it's it's a spoopy point and click adventure game um yeah a little disappointing yeah. it's not unreal engine 4 but you know it is it is what it is if you're into that sort of stuff def maybe maybe check it out it's not horrifically overpriced and you know it's thq give them give the money and say hey you know there's demand for games on linux thq nordic have been pretty good with that old uh linux support so absolutely if you're going to look at the publisher before you give someone your money thq nordic deserves it oh yeah absolutely uh point and click adventure game type stuff not necessarily my jam, but yeah, I, I was very disappointed because yeah. I saw it pop up on the radar. It's like, oh, new Steam game. And it's like, click Black Mirror. Oh, shit. The pig's getting fucked. And no. 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 Dif- different Black Mirror. No. No. You, well, and, and that, that, that would be like the British version of that game. Anyways, up next, it's time to uh, draw some pretty pictures, Pedro. Mm, or actually, Venn. Jeez, dude. Oh, yes. But no, no, you're no, you're you're, yeah. you're Pedro now, Ben, and but, Ben, you're. <laughs> let, let, let's just get into this. Jackbox Games—they have been populating the fuck and or all out of their Linux depots, all 64-bit encrypted. Mm-hmm. This one doesn't have a size yet, but uh, Jackbox Four, Jackbox Three are populated. Nothing official, you know. From like a year ago, they did something. Then two days ago kind of excited about this um you know it looks like they're going back and doing their entire library but but uh, I, I think it's fair to be a little bit suspicious that some of these depots are twice the size pedro of mm-hmm. their counterparts so and as jordan mentioned less yeah as jordan mentioned last week uh the um it's probably most likely going to be a VP port or a wine uh, thing because it includes the size of the wrapper. And that's actually the point I made last week. It's judging by how much bigger the depot size for Linux was when compared to the uh, Windows and Mac ones. It's probably got the entirety of wine included in it. So it remains to be seen because neither this nor uh, Jackbox are currently publicly available, at least not officially. So we'll have to wait and so see. But yeah, it's probably one, wine. One minor, one minor advantage about it being a wine port, though, is that we would know that it runs decently well in wine, and then you can just run Steam Wine instead of playing the wrapped version with its ancient buggy s version. But you know, I, I, I want some That's Pictionary the thing. for that horrible involves- people. That involves you running Steam uh, on Wine besides your native Linux Steam install. That n- n- no, I'd rather. Really, run a wine I, I, game I thought it, I thought Linux I just had to Steam. wish really hard, and then eventually we just start. No, 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 no. <sighs> Fortunately, not. Yeah, right. it's going to be a thing. I mean, I, I genuinely hope it's not Wine. Even if it is, we'll probably end up getting a gift. Therefore, we might play it. I don't know. Hey, we talked about this game uh, when it was called Sky Force, didn't we? Yes, yes, we did a long time ago. But this, this is Sky Force Reloaded. Uh, now, if you are someone who scours the Android Play Store every now and then, you may be familiar with this game. But now it's available on Steam, and it goes for a low, low price of uh, seven nineteen pounds. Uh, usually, it's currently ten percent off at six forty seven. So, uh, well, it's a shmup. It is very much a shmup, and admittedly, I have seen much worse looking shmups. Mm-hmm. 
to be honest. Uh, it looks very good, uh, but then you uh, you have a point uh, in your show notes there. Uh, you you really have been hitting the sauce. You just accused me of having a point. Jesus, yes. fuck all. Um, I'll tell you this right now. Um, the original, I'll agree with you, Pedro. It wasn't bad. I mean, for a mobile game, graphically and gameplay wise, mm-hmm. it was all right. It had issues because it was built from the ground up to get you to buy shit. It was a free game that mm-hmm. you bought upgrades for. And when that's built into a game's DNA from Genesis, it's hard to put a whole game back together because when you just put all the shit you're trying to sell people in, it's not built to give you that reward thing. Anyway, to your point, yeah, I scroll down and they're like, oh, it's got multiplayer now, a local co-op. The fuck's your problem? It's almost 2018. If you're making a game, you're releasing a game, it doesn't have online multiplayer. Get, get Just get fucked. Okay, seriously? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 need, we need to have like that flow chart, like maybe put it on a t-shirt or something. Does your game have multiplayer? Yes, no, yes. <laughs> online multiplayer, no. Dead end. Oh, definitely a thing because if it did, I would have yeah. instantly have purchased three copies right then, right there, just done, just mm-hmm. there. All right, and it didn't. Yeah. So, um, un- unfor- unfortunately, couch co op is dead. You- as 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 much as uh, as much as I love the experience of getting together with some people and getting wasted and playing some video games, most of the time people don't actually want to leave their house and will get wasted in their own little apartments. And play video games online with other people. Well, it's yeah. it's hard enough even yeah. getting. Listen, we know something about getting together to play games, mm-hmm. and that shit's hard enough to organize. Actually, yeah. meet space organization. Yeah. So damn shame. And they brought that. it to Steam. They yeah. brought it to Steam, and Steam, you know, Steam works. Sure, some people uh, will argue, ah, but it's DRM. Yes, but it's DRM that actually makes your life as a developer a hell of a lot easier if you want to bring network multiplayer to your game. Which, uh, for a game like this, it would just shine. That would be awesome. Just do it. Come on. All right, Jazz Hands, take us out of here. (sighs) Ah. Uh, okay, moral of the story, uh, if you have multiplayer, make it online multiplayer. Coming up next, though, we're going to talk about uh, poor memory management, and what the hell was I talking about again? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't go anywhere. It's right around the time that we get into the news, but before we do that, there is a very, very teeny tiny, well... I say TD tiny. We usually go on for a little bit longer than we intend to because you lot are awesome. You lot keep making this show, that Wednesday show we do, all those weekly streams with the video games like Mitt the Freemans and the uh, Serious Svong. Uh, we all, uh, we get to thank you for that because apparently you hate us enough that you would like to fund our... Um, forced cooperation yeah. hate watch pedro it's called hate watch yeah well, one of these days <laughs> okay. i'm actually yeah. just gonna buy like, a crate of those hulk hogan like rippable tees and then i'll just rip off my shirt for like the whoring segment <laughs> just slather myself in oil and if you want to pay for those t-shirts you can head on over to nixgamecast.com click the support the show button we got amazon affiliate links we got um Amazon, uh, we got a new egg affiliate link. We got Amazon wishlist if you want to um, get on the fuck wall, be a fine upstanding cannibal. Uh, PayPal links, Bitcoin donations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we're, 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 we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the fuck wall in a little bit. Um, and of course, you can always head on over to Patreon.com/slash the Next Gamecast for all the cool exclusive stuff that you get for being a Patreon. Um, you only really need to give us like a buck and you get some cool stuff. You get access to the discord, which by the way, uh, discord bot is going live. So please make sure to register your discord account with our bot. We have a little post. We're going to throw it in the show notes so that you can follow it, follow the instructions and, you know, participate in this, participate in this (laughs) distortion. Uh, but we're, we're taking bug reports. Let us know if there's any issues. It's the first time we're implementing it. It will be kind of uh it'll be interesting but we got we got some brand new people tossing us some wet stinky cash we got i was originally reading that as brad smithereens but it's actually brad smithy and michael n has also uh, mm-hmm. tossed us some money 
And you know, speaking speaking of the fuckball, because Frank Frank gets a little uh, gets a little needy when people don't talk about him for a little too long. He, he's there. He's holding up the the sign of uh, the people who donate hardware via the uh, Amazon wish list. The fine, upstanding cannibals are fuck buddies. And Admiral JT, he uh, he's he's his uh, latest fuck buddy because he gave us some uh, USB ground loop breakers. Oh you know, yeah, man. Right? And so and, and, so, and some audio Ooh, items. fancy. Um, he picked up the. Galvanic isolation circuits from the Amazon off of our wish list. I want to thank him so much for that. He had some extra shekels laying around. He left a note. What you're seeing on the screen right now is we're starting to get the audio chain back in shape, back together. It's kind of brilliant. Thanks, everyone, for that. Uh, but Off screen is the zero point module powering the entire thing. He sent us a little note because you can little send a little note with that Amazon thing. It's kind of neat. He says... Had a few extra shekels this month. Admiral JT, you can find him at Admiral JT. He's pretty Ooh. awesome, man. He's picked. Up, he's already on Frank's fuck wall. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, man. If you are on the Patreons, we got a bunch of levels that get you different things. We try to give you stuff back. We don't try fuck that noise. We give you shit back. I mean, we're going four days a week, man. It's all teeth and nails. Come join us Tuesday. It's um. For patrons, if you want to jump in, Pedro, we are um, trying to beat Half Life Two, and it's going to get real fucking this Tuesday. The yeah, there. it's. Yeah, uh, I, I might even drop in for that. Oh, it's gonna be fun. That'll be hilarious. Maybe I'll get stuck in the void of the oh, yeah. ground again. <laughs> oh, looking forward to yeah. that th- th- Thursday. Uh, depending on uh, bandwidth constraints, we might be doing some pyre, just because I've been wanting to play that for a while. All right. So, so Ooh. that is definitely a thing. Check that out. But you know, it's time to get on to the news segment. And you know, we 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 kept with the tradition last week, and even this week we have some uh, we have some driver news. Although it's not about a dri- it's not about new drivers. Indeed. it's about problems. No, it isn't. It's not new drivers. Uh, and apparently, Nvidia kind of you know. Shit the bed, screwed the pooch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Shit the pooch. There's an issue <laughs> with the Linux drivers. Hey, man, at and, least he uh, didn't say penis. Uh, what's his name? Heavy <laughs> HDX uh, left a uh, bit of a, a thread on Reddit and on the NVIDIA forums uh, saying that, well, there's an issue that the NVIDIA with the most recent uh, 380 driver releases the when you start a game it seems to be a little more relevant with some games uh not so much with others but especially feral games uh if you're playing like mad max or deus ex or hitman something like that you're going to be using a lot more vram on the um on the 380 series of drivers than say if you were running the 375 drivers because back in the 375 drivers apparently everything was going smoothly ish but with the new version people are reporting that they are using considerably more vram than they were previously and so uh and well, has actually commented uh, this... on this yes uh, um at- Yes, uh, there, there's a, there's a link in that thread to the actual NVIDIA dev forums where they talk about mm-hmm. apparently in the late 378 cycle, uh, there was a bug that was introduced with the uh, memory manager uh, when it comes to allocation of textures. Apparently they have a workaround uh, for it in 390, but they're still actually trying to hammer the bug in. So I think the moral uh, of that particular story yeah. is if you're running into this issue, it's a real thing. It's a real boy. It's downgraded drivers. You could wait it out because there's not a massive difference one way or the Very other much. currently right now. So wasn't terribly excited about this, but, you know, it was terribly a thing. The humbly bundly. <laughs> they, but you have to look at it. We have enough racing games to say, hey, maybe you want to pick this up. Currently 16 days left. In the pay what you want section is uh, fuck you because that's why it's all Windows. But for eight twenty four, mm-hmm. you can pick up twenty fifteen uh, Formula One and some DLC and forty percent off F one twenty seventeen, which is a Vulcan title. Fifteen dollars or more, you can have a busted virtual programming port or uh, no 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 GERD auto squirt. There's only there's only GERD too. 
Yeah, Dirt Rally is available for 15 bucks. That's yep. not a bad deal at all. 15 yeah. bucks. Yeah, if you don't have Dirt Rally yet for some reason, because it goes on sale pretty much every single time, uh, yeah, no, by all means, get Dirt Rally. It is a very good game. I've sunk over well over 30 hours into it, so uh, yeah, get it. Hmm. Good, good old Dirt Rally. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a lot of stuff that I already own in a virtual programming port that I will not own. But I like the fact that even with something like a racing title or a racing bundle, you could look at it and be like, hey, man, we got some games in there. Mm -hmm. So progress. Mm -hmm. Take it where you can get it. Now, um, the exact opposite of progress would probably be GOG. So... You know, Albert Einstein mm-hmm. is often misquoted as saying the definition of insanity is repeating the same action again and again and expecting a different result. And uh, the the fanboys, the GOG fanboys, are uh, at it again. They have opened up yet another petition asking the GOG folks to release GOG Galaxy for Linux uh, because a lot of people dislike using Steam for ideological reasons or maybe they just hate Gabe Newell's face and his nipples and want to give stuff money in someone else's g-string that's cool but remember uh if you uh if you hold your breath long enough too guys cd project red will also port richard 3 to linux like they promised years and years and years ago but so here, here, here's the thing yeah god galaxy would be nice but how about y'all get that uh, incremental update stuff working first because all that will basically let you do is download gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of installers for minimal game well, one thing I like about GOG is you own the game. You can yes. get your game. Yeah. That, that's something it will always have. Linux support or not for the GOG Galaxy client, it's a good place to know like, if I need data files, they're going to be there. And But when I said on that, mm-hmm. I, what I will say is it is terrifying that we do have a generation of people that think online petitions accomplish fuck and or all. And this this is screaming up the wrong tree organ. As J-Baby said, from the fine folks that brought you Witcher 3, wait, it's not out, it's never going to happen, and have just went radio silent on it. But there are two different companies. Fuck off. Um... We're not going to see this. And we've seen, uh, I think Strider's working with something with Luchers to try to hack in some GOG stuff. There's the Galaxy other client that... Yeah, uh, ne- Nebula is what they call Nebula. it. Nebula. That's the thing. I'm not yeah. particularly worried about it. Me, my personal use is basically if it's an old, good old game, if I need data files for something, and I like to pay for shit, um, I'll get it done GOG. Because I always know it's there. I don't have to save it anywhere. And that's pretty much the end of the story. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, Speaking it might of... still happen. Just like Carmageddon Reincarnation could still come out on Linux. It's never going to happen. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that's kind of brilliant. We need to get a class action going against them. Someone clip that out and send it to him. Because I just want to watch the fucker sweat. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you know, before people were rubbing on their areolas, they were playing with their joysticks, right? Then, mm-hmm. Atari box joystick breaks cover, and it's a beauty. God damn! I wish they had released something that didn't look like a shit 3D render. But hey, this is apparently really a thing. And the only thing we're talking about the Atari box is powered by Linux. Dudes talked a lot about it. We're looking at a photo here because most of you are listening to this, not watching it. On the, uh, think of the, the original Atari phallic controller with the single button, with the addition mm-hmm. of two buttons. And one I'm is back the, in the home button. Go ahead. No, oh, I just said a back <laughs> and a home button. That's it. Mm-hmm. Period. It's uh, going to have to say 350, <laughs> but true 50 on this uh, by Linux. They mean it's going to be running Android. I don't think those buttons are a coincidence. Oh, yeah. And if no, it's... that there's there's no question about that. That that's just that just screams Android right there. It's 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 possible. They could also just be doing a thing 
uh, where, hey, if you want to actually exit the game or whatever, uh, or actually use the joystick to manipulate a UI, you would need something like a back and a home button. But you're right, that that does smell a little bit suspicious. And it's unfortunate, too, because it's it actually looks like a nice redesign of the OG Atari controller. And people are just going to chuck it out and use a wired 360 controller via USB because that's what most games support. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, if it's running Android because we've already tried the Android, ooh, yeah, gaming console, ooh, that shit didn't yeah. fly. If Atari has any fucking illusion people are going to pay for Atari 2600 games, they're higher than Jordan wishes he was right now. Um, I don't know if this is true. <laughs> And you're completely right, Jordan. You you would not use that for the Atari games that you didn't buy in the fucking first place. You you're gonna pair it with something that you could actually play games on. Now then again, it could make for a challenging interface if it has Netflix or something like that to uh control the menus to Or or like DDR with the Atari joystick or something. Right. And then again, that's, it's got the it's got the pointy thing on the controller. It could be home invasion, you know, you could stab somebody's eye pussies out with that shit. Mm-hmm. You, you could sharpen it and uh you know if it goes all mad max yeah. and stuff man you get your atari controllers some i don't know a lot of people have a lot more faith in that box than well i do the, I, and that was the thing it was like oh yeah we'll play classic atari games but we'll also let you play regular pc games right and no one's gonna be doing that with the freaking joystick but will it work with your sega genesis is the real question Hmm. That is what everyone wants to know. Hmm? <laughs> Depends on the USB right. adapters um, that uh, certain Chinese manufacturers uh, can make. How, but, how about some dwarfs? Let's say, yeah, let's say you don't really want to play with a uh, with them fancy graphics, uh, and instead you'd rather play in your terminal. And let's say you're one of those people that's been playing Dwarven Fortress or Dwarf Fortress. Uh, for years now. Well, if you're playing it on Linux, now you can have the very latest version available with 64-bit confirmed. Well, uh, <clears throat> they say it's confirmed, and they literally say uh, that may do it. I play the 64-bit version from the VM and generated a world. Fine. A few confirmations Quality assurance. would be hey. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, take that for what you will, but take it into context as well, because English, as a non-native English speaker, I can recognize that English is a very contextual language. Um, so if we are to be fair, this is Dwarf Fortress. Uh, you can literally run it in your terminal so long as you have NCurses installed. Uh, so that's... Yeah, chances are, if it plays in a VM, it's going to play on your box. Is there anything in this version? Uh, does, it, does it have a new lacquery hairdo, sparkly cowboy boots? What's it got going on? Or is it just an incremental update to a game it's that... It's Fortress. Okay. So... Yeah, the, the, like, it, ca cats on. now cough up hairballs every 15 hours or something. Okay. <laughs> Seems just... So, who, who <laughs> wants to play with this? I mean, it's... So, this, this, uh, is, this is Game Shell. It looks uh, neat. A quote... Yeah, a, a quote, a quote, unquote, uh, Game Boy style retro gaming console based on Linux. And what it actually is is it uses um, not not the Raspberry Pi, but the Clockwork Pi, and it's a little kit that you can build and um, play some uh, games on it. At the moment, they have Doom and a couple and a couple other games that are available on your various yum repo that have been ported to a billion and six architectures but it is it is a kit and it's not really aimed at people like us maybe maybe you give it to a kid who's interested in making video games or electronics and uh it lets you and it it's it's hackable right you can take it apart you can use the uh, you can use the mm -hmm. not raspberry pi in there for your electronics project you can use it as a remote control for like robots it has a wireless speaker in there as well and yeah, it's uh, at the at the moment they have a, they have a Kickstarter going. They have about five times their asking price, and because it's a kit, they just got to three D print all the mm -hmm. components and mail it off, and people will have to build it themselves. Hashtag IKEA. But um, I mean, <laughs> well, if, fuck, if, man. If you're, if listen, you're, listen. I mean, if it comes with an Allen wrench, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just, it comes I don't with an know about the Allen wrench. Iron. That's, uh, that's... <laughs> but it does. Uh, they say that the the cur- uh, the uh, project, whatever you want to call it, is currently on Kickstarter. You can, uh, if you want the, if you want to quote unquote pre-order the promise. You can get it for 99 bucks, but they say by the time it goes on sale proper, this is, I'm guessing, the date that they are promising that it will come out in, is April 2018. Somehow, I think they're going to miss that date, but well, that's just me I mean, it's being a, it's cynical. A kit. They, uh, and so they possibly yeah. could. And it will cost yeah. 149 $149, but bucks. if you back it on Kickstarter, uh, you can get it for 99 What stinky cash is not a lot to this. Um, n- nothing bad to say about it. If we're going to be perfectly honest, it looks neat. If you're into it, it's been done before. Um, however... This looks well done, and I think it'll have a higher TSA acceptance factor than some of the <laughs> oh, yes. Builder Room Game Boy <laughs> kits, right? Oh, Just yeah. the exposed oh, yeah. piece. It's a bomb. No, it's not a bomb. It's just an arcade cabinet. Right. It's a bomb. Can I, get a, can I get a module that ticks? Yeah, just just make sure to not play Bomberman at the airport on it. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, jeez, Rick. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Let, let's put a bow on it. Our fa- uh, another team of our favorites. So go past RPCS3. Those guys that said, hey, remember that Black Box console that was really popular? We're going to make an emulator for it, and it's going to be in Vulcan, and it's going to work. Well, they've made some progress. Um, they have They have a giant ass blog post which they uh, define a bunch of like mm-hmm. the behind scenes stuff for how they've improved emulation of specific hardware uh, specific uh, modules within the PlayStation but the really cool thing is they have a bunch more games that you're able to get in game with including Demon Souls, Dark Souls 2 um, Uncharted kind of works um, God of War is super seizure tastic uh, so you're going to have to wait a little bit for <laughs> that uh, Uncharted 1 is playable uh, Uncharted 3 is somewhat borky uh, they got some Ratchet and Clank working you can read this entire thing yourself it's not my job to read it out for you nonetheless they're making it's been a while since we've seen an update from these guys uh, they're making good progress and soon soon they're 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 hoping to get Last of Us uh, completely playable which is cool because a lot of people have been holding out for oh yeah playing it because you know it, it was a very it was a critical darling and really only available on consoles. Yeah. And on the PS3, uh, The Last of Us ran like ass. Uh, they the improved or remastered or HD version, whatever they called it for the PS4, apparently runs a bit better. But I saw some people playing it on the PS3, and it ran. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's Any, anyways. Tapped. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was a little worried that was on my end. <laughs> oh no! But, oh, you uh, you do have a little bit of static coming through, though. I think you got a little jiggly cable issue. Maybe maybe I have some jiggly cables. Could be. All right. Well, and any anyways, we'll take a look at it after the break because we are going to uh, open up our case and I don't know, sit through a bunch of '90s FMVs. We're throwing we're throwing chairs at the silver case. Usually I try to come up with some sort of clever intro for these things, but I can't legitimately think of one for this game. We're throwing, we're throwing chairs at the silver case. It's by Grasshopper Manufacturer Incorporated. It's on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for around 20 of your local particular currency. What is it? Uh, the silver case is the debut title from world-renowned developer Suda51 has been fully remastered and localized to English for the first time ever. The devs did send us some keys, and if you're unfamiliar with what this is, why I'm wearing a fancy hood, and why these guys are in the dark, is because this is the chair acquisition, where we take games, we uh, we play them, we talk about them, maybe give them a bit of QA that their uh, developers didn't think to give them before they released it to the general public, and we tell you what we think, and we rate it on the chair scale. One chair means that it's garbage, two chairs means it's meh, three chairs means it's pretty good, four chairs means it's awesome. And we got our categories of doom makes with the working shiny sounds and controls and fun. And how this will work is uh, in each of the segments, we'll have a bit of a round table. We'll discuss what we, uh, what we liked, what we didn't like, 
issues that we found, things that were deserve some accommodation, and we'll uh, we'll assign it a cheer score. So let's kick this off, Pedro. <laughs> I know you suck at localization, so you're gonna go first. Oh yeah, how, how did it work? See. I'm the idiot who still runs uh, his Linux uh, installation in the Portuguese locale where it was originally installed. So this game downright doesn't work in non-English locales. This is a known bug with the Unity engine. And honestly, I thought it had been fixed, but apparently not. Because you need to add LC underscore all uh, equals C. uh percentage command percentage to the advanced launch options in steam otherwise the uh, little graphics that you see happening right now like the car going down the road that just doesn't show up you can't load the game and you can't really make any progress at all now you know current year argument and all this kind of shit was bad enough when it first happened with the old old unity 4 type titles and it, it was bad then. It's even worse now. What the hell are you doing? Seriously. I know, man. I tried it on the box of business, Ryzen 7 980, and I, I don't have the raging audacity to move to the country where English was fucking invented and not switch my locale to English. So I would not have encountered this problem. <laughs> um, hey, this was done on Unity 5. It's a game engine. It got a, I don't know. I mean, as soon as it launched, I was like, oh shit, this must, it just had that PlayStation look to it. They lost the source to this game. So like the audio was ripped off the PlayStation disc and all that. I didn't have any issues with it or nor should I 3840 by 2160. Cause you're basically playing a little letterbox, uh, full screen worked, windowed worked, and we'll get into the controls a bit later, but yeah, uh, Jordan, I, I heard you had some volumetric. Oh, yeah. No, the thing just <clears> like <throat> blew out my eardrums when I started up the game. But uh, I, I ran this on uh, the desktop, which is running Fedora 26 with the i7-6700K and the GTX 980. And I even checked it on the laptop, which is running Fedora 27, freshly upgraded. Out of the box uh, with the i7-6700HQ and the GTX 960M, everything ran perfectly fine because why wouldn't it? So, um, because, because Pedro doesn't know how to read English and because we do, this will average it to about five or five. five. No, I can't do math today. This <laughs> 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 is integer overflow is what happens. <laughs> okay. Five chairs up, up next to shiny and sounds. <laughs> ben, Ben, what'd you think? Remastered edition. So. Let's talk about this. You know, I, I went back and I, I watched the original PS1 gameplay. Because the time the PS1 came out, I'd already gotten burned by the 32X and I tapped out. I was full PC. I went and bought a 3DFX pass through card. It's like, fuck this console stuff. Um, I, I think a better definition for this would be mildly enhanced edition. Not, uh, you got some balls saying it's completely remastered because there's a lot of shit in there that you can't read and not, not to say that's necessarily a problem I'm going to talk more about that in the fun section because you're kind of along for the ride but yeah it got a little sketchy a couple of times uh it's even with the enhanced it's got a bunch of enhancements with movement and stuff i'll talk about the controls it says graphics i, I can't I, really I, see i that. mean yeah it's it's the remaster in this case just means that all the art assets are hd so they're not like completely pixelated quote unquote which HD. i guess is a thing yeah. is. and like the, the the visual aesthetic is definitely interesting because you have like random words like integer and load and strict copy and whatnot just throwing thrown up on the on the screen and it kind of reminds me of some sort of like strider-esque french new wave cinema hmm. which i guess is like it could, it could work given the genre of the game which is like a detective story but um yeah you're, you're gonna be sitting here reading a lot uh pro tip um alternating mental cast members of bill cosby snagglepuss and frankenfurter make this game a much more entertaining read than you would otherwise expect <laughs> yeah i almost wish the locale bug would uh make it so i couldn't hear the sound effects because 
That typing noise is so goddamn annoying and so goddamn loud and all up in your face. All over the fucking time, too. Uh, now, the graphics are completely unremarkable. They look like something out of the PS1 era, which, you know, this game came out in 1999 originally, so it probably was. Um, I tried this on the laptop while I was trying to debug exactly why this wasn't working on the desktop, because I have the laptop set to the UK locale, so it works in English. And the game was working fine there, so I came back to the desktop, put in LC underscore L. Oh, oh, look at that. It works. But yeah, even on the laptop, it runs at like 10 frps, so it's horribly unoptimized for a PS1 era game. Well, what type of laptop are we like talking shit. about? What, what kind of laptop? What, what? This is an HP Elite Book uh, 830 G2, I think. Uh, and it has an i5 6200U, which runs uh, Dirt Rally on admittedly ultra low settings, but it runs it uh, in the benchmark, it says 70 FERPs average. So that's the laptop you're looking at. And this game runs like ass, like complete that, fucking that, ass. That, that's, that's interesting. Uh, one one thing that the game does do right though, and Ben, I think you agree. The 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 soundtrack is pretty nice. The soundtrack's good. good, man. It doesn't uh, sound like a playmate from the '80s, but it does have the backing <laughs> track of anime from the mid to late '90s, and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. No. I mean, it. No, I, I I was I was definitely into it. Yeah, I can uh, dig that. So, so uh, I'm gonna say, listen, two chairs for me, just because it technically works. I really wish it was it remastered because i see stuff from like double fine that's actually fucking remastered they put the effort into it to completely mm -hmm. redo it or, or or something like wonder boy where they completely reanimated everything exactly and um yeah this, this came off as a very lazy now then again it is wicked wicked more difficult to do something that was originally 3d and I'm sure this looked amazeballs. Not really, because I actually looked at the footage from the PS1. And yeah, things have more textures on them. I think Strider even pointed out they have a nasty, nasty case of the Jaggies and the 3D that you do see that is played in a little tiny, tiny poster, mm -hmm. postage stamp. It reminds me of playing games on my Sega CD. Well, tiny, I'll, I'll, I'll talk tiny. about this a little more in the fun segment. But one of the interesting things while I was looking up at the look, looking up this game, because like, what the fuck is this? This looks old as hell. Mm -hmm. Apparently, um, this was actually made on like a hellish shoestring budget with like barely any assets. Yeah, it so, was uh, the but, studio's first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was and Suda's game on first game on top of that. So the the uh, part of that was there was like a challenge involved with like taking what little assets they had and making a full game out of it. Anyways. Uh, it's gonna get one chair because Pedro doesn't like retro. He hates it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd, I'd give no, it it's not that I don't like retro. Is that I literally couldn't see the video without that variable in place. Good, good, good job having a poorly configured system. Up next is control. Yeah, <laughs> so this is uh, this is a man. very, very much like an early 3D console point and click game that's been ported to PC. They give you like this weird. I looked up the original control scheme, and like it, it's very much meant to work with the uh, PlayStation controller, but instead you have the S button to bring up the options menu, the I button to bring up an inventory, a the C button to actually interact with things, mm -hmm. and then the M button if you want to actually move around, and that uses the arrow keys, and you can use uh, space or uh, enter to parse through text. Now... Despite being a point-and-click adventure game, the keyboard bindings actually make more sense if you straight up do not use the the mouse. Um, mm -hmm. It's 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 a little weird. I got used to it after a while, and they they, they even say as much in the in the in the game, like yeah, this is this is weird, but you'll get used to it. And like ah, oh, this is weird, but hey, whatever. I got used to it. Um, still though, uh, the the UI itself is very confusing, and the game there 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 are times when like the puzzles show up, and the game is. Very, very unclear as to what exactly you're supposed to be doing and whether or not you're making progress, which I feel is the fault of the controls. Yeah, I definitely uh, think it is, man. I mean, I just immediately and the first time you have to do something, you know, after your initial 20 minutes of tapping a space to continue text because yep. that, that, that's your first 20 minutes of this game. 
Uh, it's just a big ball of sweet mother of flaming nope. Now, I, I gotta give this game a bonus soda for at least attempting to pull off point and click in the PS1 era with a controller. Good on them. I can kind of understand how that this bullshit layout would have made sense with the original PS1 controller. However, you equally get smashed in the fucking face organ with a chair for keeping that bullshit in place and not just letting me hook it up the way I need it to. It's nostalgic. Fuck this, man. They knew the control (laughs) scheme. They knew this control scheme was nightmare fuel back in 99. I know this for a fact. Yes, they did add WASD. They added WASD, but... You know, just getting to the points where you're moving around, as Jordan was talking about with that fucked up little circle, that's a problem in itself that needed to be. And, you know, I've counted three separate occasions where the game itself has told me, now this might seem a little confusing at first. It's like, motherfucker, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little confusing. It's really wicked confusing. And just forget I, I gave up with the controller i tried it with the keyboard and dribble and it was somehow worse yeah the controls quote unquote work now this seems to be the only thing that did before i uh, started forcing all the locales to see system wide uh but they're still bad it's uh 90s level bad uh the fact that the game keeps acknowledging that the controls are complicated and that everything is really really bad doesn't really help because if you know for a fact that the controls are really really bad you instead of acknowledging that in the game you probably should have gone in and actually fixed them now when you're actually actively trying to play the game itself you know after the 10 or so minutes of uh, unskippable bullshit with the text. Uh, actually, what you're looking at right now, um, the it does the mist thing that it lets you spin in place and move to another square on the map, and then you can look up or look down. That's it. I honestly, I'm not impressed. But hey, at least the controls worked out of the box, so that's something. Yeah. Yeah, so so what I understand, what I take away from this is Suda51 hates Portugal. So if we, I, I think we all agree, it's kind of like a two chair scenario for this, for the controls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, all wow. right. And finally, fun. Hashtag big dick chinchilla. That's actually in the game. Do you know my um, favorite part of this game? My favorite part? When you hit alt F4? Mm, second favorite part of this mm-hmm. game? Do you want to know my second favorite part of this game? What is is the the joy of reading Pedro's refest, um, especially with some of the convoluted bullshit games that he really enjoys. I think that's fun. Made me happy D- to D- read that. Hash, hashtag Dominions Five. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, the, the, here's the thing, though. This was always supposed to be an experimental game, and when oh, you yeah. have time and resource and budget constraints, sometimes the answer to your problems is to just take a weird step out there and hope that people grok what you're putting out there. I haven't really played uh, Killer7 or No More Heroes or any of the other Suda51 games, so I don't really have a sense of what makes his uh, spot sauce the special sauce. Um, I mean, there, there's definitely some visually interesting stuff that that happens in the game. Um, I, I, I sort of like the noir detective style, but because this is a, this is a text adventure game, the the dialogue here is sort of like the the clinchpin or the linchpin of whether or not you will enjoy it. And oh boy, who who we. The, the, you you kind of get the sense that like the dialogue is supposed to be just these normal people having a conversation. Mm-hmm. But and this might this might actually be the translator's fault because this might actually be perfectly like in the original Japanese it makes perfect sense. This is how people talk. Whatever. I I I, I don't speak Nihon. I'm 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 not weed tastic. I'm not. Well, I mean, it's like was, Vorlon was, poetry, man. It always loses something in translation. Yeah, or v- Vogon poetry. It makes you want to kill yourself. <laughs> uh, check it out. I mean, for me. I didn't know shit about this game going in other than it's like, oh, here's a game we need to do. It kind of surprised me because it was six gigs of download. I was thinking like 100 megs. Um, personally, it's not much of a game. It's about as much of a game if you want to put it on what I perceive games as. It's about as much of a game as Gone Home, You're Drunk. 
Um, <laughs> basically, what you have, it's visual novel, man. Walking simulator mixed in with the occasional puzzle. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. It's not necessarily my bag. Um, the criminal thing is it just kills this game is the hot mess that claims to be an interface. That's bad. That's wrong. I understand you had to deal with limitations, but if you're going to go back and remaster something, make it playable, make it good, update it. You know, um, there's no way I could justify spending, what is this thing? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. unless you just wanted a digital copy to yeah, for I, a collector's I, I, I thing, think man. This is this is definitely more aimed at people who are like big fans of Suda Fifty One, yeah, and kind of want like the full discography, whatever that he's he's put out. That's um, really the whole. No, okay, okay. No, I, 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 I have isn't. a question for you guys though. Do you after, after after about an hour and a half of this game, I don't know who any of the characters are. Nope. They keep nope. they keep th- they keep throwing names at me. The intro cinematic lists a bunch of names with like pictures. I mm-hmm. still have no idea who anyone is. Yeah, and you're not going to have any idea what anyone is because any of the irrelevant bits that actually happen in the game are glorified JPEGs that show up on screen for a little bit and then disappear. Uh, it's I've played Suda 5-1 games in the past. I have. Uh, I loved Killer7. Killer7 was an amazing Suda 5-1 game. Uh, this, on the other hand, I think I've honestly found my most hated game of 2017. Uh, I mean, honestly didn't think anything could top. I didn't think anything could top Spacebound when it came to the making me viol- violently ill category. Uh, well, I was wrong. This is exactly the kind of game I hate the most. There are no mechanics here. The mechanics are here solely to make you think that Suda 5-1's masturbatory stiffy over his storytelling is in any way, uh, great. Uh, The graphics barely even register since all the important bits, as I mentioned, are glorified JPEGs. There's so much text on screen at any point that I felt like I'd be better off with the I think this guy is a fucking master because he pissed you off by making a visual novel. Oh yeah, he absolutely did. Uh, If you want to experience this game like I did, the best way to do it is to watch a Let's Play of the original Myst on YouTube. Without full screening, mind you, you want the letterbox all the way, which was recorded in 240 by 160 Mute the audio, have someone tap along in an old digital typewriter right next to your fucking ears, and focus on the text below the video. Yeah, you read that YouTube description. Are you bored yet? Because I sure as hell fucking was. Oh, he's so angry. So uh, angry. I, I know it's so cute. Yeah, he's getting all flushed and whatnot. <laughs> so uh, I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't think any of us really enjoyed this game. No. This, this. This. This is. I. I no. feel this is very much like. In, in addition to the fact that it's a very very strange game with, I would I would say a fairly limited appeal. It just didn't hit any of our like good notes. It's like, uh, it, could have been. Could have been. I just feel that this is a very not. I'm hesitant to use the word lazy, but you know, he, he, here's my piece of advice: if you don't have the original source for the game and you're not going to remake that shit from scratch, uh, maybe you might want to tap out on the remastered versions because you end up with some hot shit like this. And, and I. I'm all for, like, uh, full-on Japanese author-type games. I want to see the good Suda 5-1 games on Linux. I want to see Killer7. I want to see Killer is Dead. I want to see all the other ones. This is shit. I don't want this. Do you want a taco? Yeah, I could go for a taco right now. He doesn't well, know what tacos no one cares are. What you want. So that's 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 one no, chair I've for uh, plenty the of tacos, segment. Now. <laughs> and uh, we're we're gonna tie this up. One chair for uh, the silver case. Uh, any anything else you want to throw on top of this before mm. we head on over to the hate mail? If you want this game, you already own it. That's really all we can say about it. Um, it's pretty, much. pretty easy to shit on something from 1999 games. This was a very new 3D. People were just throwing shit at walls and seeing what sticks. I understand what was going on here. If you put yourself in the mindset, 1999, something like that, the dude's trying to sell a, tell a story, sell a story even. You know, with the 3D, the camera uh, work, the 
just that the cinematography of it, I I feel it. I feel the vision behind played, it, man. I played a lot of good games from 1998. No, you didn't. You, you just know, think Quake you did. Two. Quake 2. I still actively play Quake 2 to this day. On the PlayStation? Was, okay, sure. It No, not on the PlayStation, on the PC. It still suffers from a lot of that 90s development bullshit. Quake 2 was the worst of the entire series. Quake 2 was nothing. The entire mechanic of Quake 2 was see who can get the rocket launcher first. That's the entire game. 100%. That's not, I'm not talking about the multiplayer. I'm talking about the actual single player campaign it had a oh, story, that was even bare worse. bones as it was bare bones as it was it was a good story and my all-time favorite game is also from 1998 it was fallout 2 admittedly it's not on linux but it is it's got very in, in, good in, in, storytelling incidentally, just it's because got... you two are just going to go on forever and ever just hate oh yeah i would quake quake quake, <laughs> quake is based off of dungeons see i can mute him so what were you saying <laughs> I was saying that uh, Fallout 2, as you know, it's not on Linux. It never will be now that Bethesda actually owns the damn uh, rights. I love that game. And that's from 1998. It's got great storytelling. It's got great mechanics. This is the perfect example of a really bad game from that time. Just, you know... I know that Suda 5 can make better games. Just bring those to Linux. And they instead, did. This please. is baby steps. All right, man. Let's get the fuck All out right. of here. All right. All right. I have nothing else to add. Y'all Y'all are done fan wankering. Coming up next, uh, we talk about Notorious VNN. V-E-N-N? Whatever. This, this is CNN. Hey. You know what time it is. It's the end of the show. Yeah, that's right. That's the time that you, you, right now, if you think that for some reason we were unfair uh, when we threw chairs at the silver case, if for some reason we, you felt that uh, we were You're everything wrong with any Linux of our gaming. News, You're hurting yeah, the community, no, Pedro. Uh, if you would like to shout in our direction, even just, you know, say some disparaging remarks about our parents, you can do that. You can do that easily by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button. You fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Just make sure uh, LGC Weekly is the little thing that's on the drop downy box. You can also send some uh, relationship advice for Jordan. Uh, he will be glad to get back to you on that. Uh, there are plenty plenty of things you could uh leave in that uh, contact box what are you doing uh, <laughs> um you if you're a game developer and you'd like us to have a look at your game after you saw that review probably that's not going to be the case but hey uh if you are by all means do make sure to read the little thing that says count the number of hosts and give us the, those many keys that's basically all we ask for you give us three keys or a build that we can share among the three of us and we will be very very happy to put your game through its paces if not well we're just gonna make fun of you hmm? sure <laughs> making fun of people we, we wouldn't do that we're, we're nice friendly people um mm -hmm. but we we, <laughs> we we got some hate mail the first one is uh he's talking biggie smalls biggie smalls biggie smalls Whoa. Okay, we're, 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 we're in the clear. And he says, Damn, Ben, you looked were bigger using the old cam. Great show regardless. From Philippe. So, Ben, tell us your weight loss secrets. Uh, no, man, it's camera fuckery. It's all perspective. I, le I learned it by watching behind the scenes at Lord of the Rings DVD extra thing for movie theaters. Yeah, secret secretly, Ben is actually a hobbit. He's with like the hairy feet. Dude, I'm mm -hmm. I, I'm a meter fucking tall, man. That's that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, <laughs> it. It's not the cam. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna drop a few me's, a few stones, and I did. It's all better, except I chose the wrong time to do it. Cause motherfucker, I'm cold in a way I haven't been in about a it's decade. It's cold now. <laughs> yeah. Ins insulation is nice. All right, but we do have a more serious and pressing. Uh, this is something Ryan sent me. Send him over the Twitters, and you can leave a YouTube comment, or you hit us up on Twitter. That just there's no guarantee we're going to see it or get back to you. But he writes, uh, 
about bottles, bottlenecking. He says, mm -hmm. hey, man, how do I know if a CPU and GPU are a good combination for gaming, question mark? You, Trying you to avoid a bottleneck without breaking the bank? Right. I just hit both their mute buttons. Uh, looking at not overspending on the older system. My kids play on an A8 5600K and a Phenom 2x4 955. Um, so, uh, maybe I'm a little cray cray, but when I saw, you know, an A8 56 and a Phenom, ooh, 955. I was kind of team used 750 Ti because those little fuckers are like less than 50 quid used everywhere. Um, there's one I right mean, here. <laughs> uh, so I I, I have the A10 5800K, which is the <laughs> APU next up. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna have some problems uh, with the 5800K just because you're gonna have to deal with the R600 AMD uh, Mesa driver. And that is one of the more neglected ones. Um, well, these are the systems I, I, he currently has. He's looking for an yeah. add-on graphics card. He's, he's looking for an add-on graphics card. Well, he, he, he has for specifically CPU and video card combos. So um, you, can, you can definitely look at uh, something like some of the cheaper Ryzen's. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, it, 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 you, it, you're not getting it. Dude, 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 dude. He's not looking to buy a new CPU. He's, he, what he's looking for. Is, is what CPU and GPU are a good combination? That's I've, kind of a vague, it's a vaguely worded question. It could it could get read multiple. There, there's more detail to it in the twitters. I just didn't shove them all in there. I'm trying to clarify for you. Mm -hmm. He's sure. looking for a graphics card. He's looking for a video card. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I mean, you, you you could also look at like if you really want to if you really want to pull out the cheapness, you could look at maybe like the 1040 or something like that. The 750 Ti is a little is a little old hat these days, though. Yeah, you're right. You can probably get it for about fifty bucks. Um, yeah, if you can yeah, get the, a 750 Ti for the fifty dollar mark, that's a pretty good way to go. That said, though, you probably should look at upgrading uh, at least the Phenom because the Phenom doesn't have support for triple SE3 and SSE4. So that's going to be a bit of an issue as more and more in, games in, start in, to require you that. Can get an, I, I, I found them. You can get an 8320 for 100 bucks now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... It, it, don't don't uh, don't go for the FX line. Uh, the Ryzen three twelve hundreds are like eighty bucks nowadays, and that's probably something you should be looking at because that's a quad core, no high, no uh, simultaneous multi threading, whatever it is. It's just the quad core, so that's going to give you the best no. uh, price performance ratio on the um, the four cores that you do get. But if you are only looking to upgrade that GPU, yes. Uh, if you can find a second or third hand 750 Ti for around the $50 mark, that's great. Uh, the GTX 1030s are currently, they give you around the same performance as a GTX 750. Not the Ti version, but the, it gives you about the same performance as the 1050. Uh, not the 1050, the 750. Uh, so... Yeah, that's something to look at if, as well. If, 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 if you if you do want if you do feel like spending the hundred and fifty bucks though, uh, the ten fifty or the ten fifty Ti is definitely definitely oh, yes. definitely the way to go. It's uh, it's on the level of the nine seventy. Plus, you can use all four gigs of its RAM. This is true. Mm -hmm. And if anybody out there is looking to currently make a budget build, say, hey, you're about to buy a motherboard and a CPU, and you want to do it on a wicked small budget, hold the fuck off because. You might notice something yeah. on your Ryzen motherboard. There's a fucking VGA board on the back of that shit. And it's not there for aerodynamics. Um, no. No, we're, we're about to get the Vega APUs or whatever the hell they want to call them. Mm -hmm. So that's the, going to the, be interesting. The but ones. then again, you know, then we got you know, the 415 Kirtle. Shit might actually work, kind of. And that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're yeah. We're, st we're still waiting on the Mesa guys to catch up with the uh, Vega stuff, though. Um, but either way, uh, there 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 are a milieu of options if you want a budget system. Uh, 
I'm sure Pedro has like a million pages on PC part picker because that's what he does in his spare time. <laughs> I'm guilty of uh, going in and uh, playing Renault Lepage at his uh, War of the Shit boxes game. It's, See, I, I, uh, I can't do that because then I end up just buying them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't buy them. It's just, okay, let's set a target price and build the best possible system out of that target price. And PC Part Picker is actually a very good website to do that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think on that bombshell, it's time to cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Time, unless it's not. Hit the schedule button at linuxgamecast.com. You can find me at Vinstone on Twitter, plus Vinstone. Google Plus is kind of brilliant. I will at least read anything you take the time to send. I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me burning money in a pile just because I hate it so much at The Burning Fool on Twitter. Plus, Jordan Swung on Google Plus. And I am Pedro Mateus. You can find me... Uh... Well, if you're in the UK, you can find me around the Cambridge area, but uh, if you would like to shout at me over the interwebs, you can do so at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus with those on Google Plus. No promises, I'll get back to you anytime soon because I. Because he, really he hits you. He hits you all. It, it, it you awesome. <laughs> if Pedro can put it off, he's going to put it off. Man. Come on. Um, did, did we learn anything? this week other than man ring ring goes down it, it takes the fucking family with it um, <laughs> um in this case wire when when in doubt make sure that the cheese that you leave on the counter doesn't have too much mold going on and if it's red run away I, I can't red think. cheese I don't know <laughs> listen it's 7 o'clock in the morning I'm spitballing here leave me the fuck alone Time for the credits. <laughs> Red cheese, it's bleeding. Keep cutting it. <laughs> Frank oh. knows what you did last summer. How do you think Frank became a skeleton? <laughs> <laughs> the um oh did did you see that thing I posted for the poor kid who had a water cooling system and he had the red dye? No. And it's cool. Oh yeah. Red. Yeah. So it, I want to see a picture of your girlfriend with the day's newspaper. Yeah. That, that, it was nasty, man. I mean, it, it looked like somebody <laughs> slaughterated something in his room all the way into his bathroom, into his tub. Nice. Mm-hmm. It was like, this is why you don't put dye in your CPU liquid. <laughs> and you could tell, like, uh, when he pulled the case out of the bathtub, you could see the outline of the case. <laughs> you. <laughs> no, you, you could also see the, uh, well, the vague outline of, like, a body. Like, yeah, it's from the case, you guys. Don't use dye. Don't use glitter shit. I mean, all right. No, 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 Ben, Ben. Use glitter in your liquid cooling system. They make that shit, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. By all means, dude. <laughs> you you got to use that automotive antifreeze, man. That's the shit. Five dudes.